this is a dumb question. What do you? Uh, all right. Let me no, think. no, tell me your dumb question. I want to hear it. Okay. Uh, I mean, okay. This, this is the question about beauty. It's way too general. It's very impossible. To, it's like asking, "What's your favorite band? Uh, what's your favorite music band?" Oh, I thought you meant wavelength band. I was like, I definitely have favorite wavelength <laughs> bands. Absolutely. <laughs> well, it's hard to narrow, narrow down, huh? Okay. Uh, what uh, What to you is the most beautiful idea in science? It's not a dumb question. Do you want to try that question again proudly? Okay. <clears throat> I I have a really good question to ask you. <laughs> okay, don't don't oversell it. Okay. <laughs> I've got what? an okay question to ask, you know? I have uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what uh what to you is the most beautiful idea in uh in science? Something you just find inspiring or just maybe the reason you got into science or the reason you think science is cool. My favorite thing about science is kind of the connection between the scales. So when I was little and I wanted to know about space, I really felt that it would make me feel powerful to be able to predict the heavens, something so much larger than myself that felt really powerful. It was almost a selfish desire. And that's what I wanted. There was some control to being able to know exactly what the sky would do. And then as I got older and I got more into astronomy and I didn't just want to know how the stars moved. I wanted to know how the planets around them moved. And, and then as I got deeper into that field, I really didn't care that much about the planets. I wanted to know about the atmospheres around the planets and then the molecules within those atmospheres and what that might mean. So I ended up shrinking my scale until it was literally the quantum scale. And now all my work, the majority of my work, is on this insane quantum scale. And yet I'm using these literal tiny, tiny tools to try and answer the greatest questions that we've ever been able to ask. And this crossing of scales from the quantum to the astronomical, that's so cool, isn't it? Yeah. It spans the entirety, the tiny and the huge. That's the, that's the cool thing about, I guess, being a quantum astrochemist yeah. is you're using the tools of the tiny to uh, look at the heavenly bodies, the the giant stuff. And the potential life out there, that this is the thing that connects us, that you yeah. can't escape the rules of the quantum world and how universal they themselves are, despite being probabilistic. Mm. And that f makes me feel really pleased to be in science, but in a really humbling way. Uh, it's no longer this thirst for power. Um, I I feel less special the more work I do, less exceptional the more work I do. I feel like humans and the earth and our place in the universe is less and less exceptional. And yet I feel so much less lonely. And so it's been a really good trade-off that I've lost power, but I've gained company. <laughs> wow, that's a beautiful answer. I don't think there's a better way to actually end it. You're right. I asked a mediocre question and you came through, uh, you made the question good that's by a brilliant answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're the Michael Jordan and I'm the, who's the uh, Dennis Rod? I'll be the Dennis Rodman. I, this is a I don't old... know enough about basketball. I mean, literally you've reached the peak of my basketball knowledge Olympics. because I know that those people are basketball. But that's it. Pros, I believe, but only because I watch Space Jam, I think. <laughs>